This conference will now be recorded. Okay, guys, so uh, here in this session, I will cover a new topic that is head office and branch office concept. Generally, I was supposed to continue with IST integration. Uh, but recently, this question actually was asked uh, from one of my students. And uh, twice or thrice people have asked this question. So that's what I thought like uh, I'll have to cover. So this topic you won't be finding anywhere, guys. You see whatever the videos are available on YouTube or wherever it is. So this is a quite unique topic. So here this concept we need to understand and generally in this topic there is no any configurations. It's all end user transactions itself. Uh, but the thing is like we need to understand the requirement and what is the solution because if any of the end user come up with this kind of queries and all. So if you know this concept then only you are going to provide the solutions. Okay. So that is why I thought like let me uh, cover this topic and then uh, we'll proceed further for this whatever this FISD integration is there that will be also covered after this. Okay, because long back I have done this. So today itself I saw I almost forgotten these things. So I saw today itself I referred some uh, old documents and all and then I thought okay it's it's you know clear today so let me complete today itself because again tomorrow i may forget so now uh, in hurry i have just prepared a ppt so because first of all i'll have to make you guys understand what is this concept all about and then what exactly uh, we are going to do uh, these all things i'll explain here okay so here if you talk about head office and branch office concept what is this head office and branch office concept concept now look at here in uh, some of the organizations generally they allow their branches to make sales or purchase of the goods of their goods independently but the accounting for those sales is performed centrally at head office level i'll just tell you guys little, let's suppose there is a certain organization xyz limited so that organization is selling some particular you know product so what is happening that organization is having head office in delhi so these people are having control there they're going to do the all the transactions recordings and everything is happening over there but they have given authorizations to their branches let's suppose they're having five branches 10 branches 20 branches so what they are saying that okay whichever sales are taking place independently independently you guys are going to uh, make the sales or purchase and all and uh, only what will happen whenever it comes to the payments and all whether it is making a payment or receiving payment will be done by head office okay the final payments will be done by head office now let's suppose i'll just give an example since i'll just give an example of account receivable <clears throat> most likely it comes in case of customers and all even it can be in account payable also but now i'll just give an example as a customer right now so let's suppose this xyz is there xyz limited okay this is the head office now it is having branches like xyz then again bangalore Okay. okay so now what is happening this company is having let's suppose three or more than three branches okay so now they have this company has allowed like let's suppose this xyz limited is our customer okay is our customer 
So what will happen? This is our customer means these people are buying. These people are buying product, you know, and product from Tata Motor. So what will happen now here? The head office. This is the main. This is the main organization. So what they have given instructions or what they are doing. Generally, they have given authorizations to their branches to make purchase and sales independently. Okay. In case of Tata Motor, what these guys are going to do? Since they are our customer, so this XYZ Limited, whichever the branches are there, these all three branches are making purchase from Tata Motor independently. It means whenever any invoice, whenever any uh, what to say uh, requirement we receive from XYZ Hyderabad, then we have to we have we are going to deliver this product to Hyderabad itself, and apart from this, invoices also is going to be raised. Against this Hyderabad itself, okay. This is also going to be invoices are going to be raised against Bangalore. Here also invoices are going to be raised against Mumbai, okay. But what will happen, guys? The payment we are going to receive from X Y Z Limited, their head office. So how this concept? How we have to configure these things in SAP? Because we have sent invoices against one entity. Whereas the payment is going to be received from other entity. So how the clearing will take place? Because if you post any invoices against this one, then what is happening against this customer? Open item is there. Whereas you receive payment from different customers. So how this open item is going to be cleared? This is the question from people. So if you are able to understand this concept, then easily you'll be able to reply the answers. So here this is called head office and branch office concept now what will happen guys in such a case okay in this case what we have to do we have to create this organization as a head office and remaining three as a branch office in the sense i'll just tell you these three are our customer okay so we have to set up this one as a customer master this one also as a customer master and this one also as a customer master and final payment we are receiving from head office. So even this one also we have to create as a customer master. So this is head office means let's suppose we are having customer master number 1001 and this is 1002. This is 1003. This is 1004. So this is going to be created as a head office. OK, and this head office is going to be linked against all the branch offices all the branch offices what is happening guys we are going to link this head office okay so now i'll show you guys practically once once we send once we send the invoice once you send the invoice what will happen there will be an open item here in head branch office at the same time transaction is getting posted against head office also OK, and again, there is an open item against this one, but transaction is getting posted against uh, this head office also. So indirectly, what is happening? There will be open item here and in branch offices also. So now if you want to look at like how much total outstanding balance is there at head office level, then if you look at this balance against this, this customer master open item report, then we will be having the open item of all these three customers Hyderabad, Bangalore, Mumbai. Okay. And if you are going to have a look out at individual level, then you'll be having the report for individual level itself. Whenever we receive payment from, let's suppose this XYZ Limited, okay, if XYZ Limited has made the payment, then the clearing will be happening for this, for this head office also and in the, even in branch office also. I'll just show you guys practically how it is going to happen. So why this concept is there guys? Like people will say that whatever the invoices and the, you know the whatever the communications are there, you just do at branch office level. You send the invoices to branch office itself. Do all the configuration conversation with the branch office itself. If you have not received payments and all you just need to communicate with the branch office itself, but final payment will be made by head office. Okay, 
the final payment will be made by head office so how it is going to happen guys it's pretty easy i'll just let you know so that's what even i have explained here theoretically the first thing is like the organizations there are few organizations they allow their branches to make the sales or purchase of their goods independently but the accounting for these sales is performed centrally centrally means at head office uh, level and since the payment is going to be made by head office okay so all the dunning notices related to the branches go to the head office itself okay who is responsible to make payment head office itself is responsible to make payment so if if let's suppose if for any of the invoices if we have not received any payment and if it become overdue and that to by a margin of 10 days 20 days 30 days like that so whom we are going to escalate whom, whom we are going to running uh, notices and all in the sense reminder i mean to say reminder so reminder also will be going to the head office itself because these are the final person or entity who is going to make us payment so all the dunning notice notices related uh, to the branches go to the head office account itself and the payments are made by head office so now we'll do one thing first of all i'll just this is also first time i am uh, you know covering this topic for you guys only previously this was not there at all and even almost i forgotten this concepts long back i got one requirement and there was a query so i guess i think in those days i read out somewhere some blog and all and then i came concepts so i just explain my end user so might be even after getting placements also let's suppose if somebody doesn't ask during interview it's okay it depends upon your luck but uh, if you know this concept of course somewhere or the other you guys will be having the benefit of these all things because if you receive any requirement from your end user then if you know this easily you guys are going to give the answers so okay now here so what we are going to do the first thing is like let's suppose instead of three i'll just give example of two this is a company this is the main main company and it is having two branches hyderabad and bangalore okay head office is there in delhi let's suppose okay in capital so they have allowed their both branches to make all kind of purchases and sales and uh, since so all the invoices will be received here to the branch office and uh, payment will be made by head office so i'll just do one thing so what we have to do guys in this case we have to create three customer master because they are our customer so we have to create three customer master one is xyz limited head office this is these two are at you know uh, these two remaining two are going to be created as a branch office how that i'll show you guys so use xd01 transaction code and then select your account group i to create customer master you know you guys know very well so now here give your company code tm10 and press enter now so xyz limited limited for tm10 and this is head office and uh, then give country code only remaining details not required and uh, click on company code data and here we are going to give reconciliation account okay guys so after that look at here head office here we are having this right head office concept so this is the head office right so i'll just do one thing you just save this one here in payment transactions give a payment transaction triple zero one immediately due and then 
press enter. Okay, press enter. And even I'll just do one thing, guys. Dunning notice also we have to. I have to show you guys that the invoice is getting posted against a different customer. But whenever we are going to run this Dunning notices and all, Dunning notices is going to be generated and it is going to be sent to the head office itself. So for that, we need to give Dunning procedure also. What is the customer? 100217. So I'll just do one thing. Then after, I'll just do one thing, guys. Uh, okay. So then create XT01 once again and branch office. Branch office. Branch office for TM10. Hyderabad. Okay. And give a code. Any name you can give, guys. It's not like this itself you have to give. I'm giving for my identification and all because if this same topic, if I have to cover somewhere, then I'll change this code simply. And click on company code data and here give your reconciliation account. Now look at your head office. So whenever you are going to create the branch office as a customer, then whichever head office customer number is there that must be assigned here. This is the logic behind this guys. Look at here. There is one field. OK, this one field is going to consist of this one field consists of one complete scenario. Isn't it? So likewise, there are several things are there still uh, anyway, uh, so it's not possible to cover each and everything because even like uh, if we started covering all those things, then it is going to take even 10 years also to learn, you know that anyway. So uh, here in head, head office, what we are going to do? Head office customer number we are going to give. OK, so whenever you create branch office in that you have to give head office customer number. What is that customer number? Uh, here, this one test customer number. No, this one. This is the head office 217. Here payment transactions you can give this one. And uh, in correspondence we can give. Dunning procedure TM10 and save it. And then again, we have to create one more customer. One more customer. What is this customer number? I'll just note it somewhere. OK, so I'll create one more customer number. One more customer that is for. Bank door. All the required information so only we are going to give you your reconciliation account and branch head office so this is the head office guys right there is the head office 217 and the payment transactions give this one in correspondence give dunning procedure and save it now, so what we have done, guys, we have created these three entity as a master data. Since the final payment is going to be released by head office, but invoices and other things requirement is going to be raised by branch offices. OK, so all these three head office and branch office we have created as a customer master, but head office as a head office is created as a head office itself and branch offices are created as a branch office itself. Isn't it? So for head office, it's not like that. We have we have simply given some descriptions only, but in branch office, whichever the head office is got created, that head office we have linked with the branch offices. Okay. Now we'll do one thing. Now I'll post a transaction. Okay. This is
219 was there, I guess. This is the customer, second customer number. Use FB70. And we'll see how it is happening. We'll post an invoice. So we are going to post, let's suppose the requirement we have received from Hyderabad. So here 100. First of all, uh, let me check. The company code is different. So change the company code. Okay, so give your company code and press enter. Now, so we'll do one thing. Give this branch office, Hyderabad branch office number that is 100218. And then invoice date, let's suppose so i'll just make it over to you guys because i have to cover this dunning run also okay how the dunning is going to be generated at head office level so now here uh, okay so now here give a date like any date 15 zero nine Okay, and which amount? So amount, let's suppose 1500. And GL account. So there will be a GL account. Let me check. 3000 I have given. And then here also 1500. Press enter. Okay. Press enter. Look at here, guys. So what I have given, I have given. I have given branch office number. Okay, I have given the branch office number. Look at here, this number I have given, but this is the branch. So in customer field, automatically system has updated 217 because this is the head office. Okay, there is the even though we are going to post this invoices against branch office itself, invoices sent to the branch office, but automatically system has taken this head office also head office automatically has appeared here okay in customer field it means system says that this number is the main customer and this one is the branch one now click on simulate and let's see what is happening then what accounting entry is getting generated so okay now look at here the accounting entry in accounting entry the head office is going to be debited and your sales revenue is going to be credited now save it. So generally what is happening guys, generally uh, here if you talk about this invoice, so it got posted at head office level also and branch office level also. Okay, it got updated, uh, posted at head, of, head office level also and branch office level also. FB, L, 5, and press enter. So our customer is like 217. This is your head office, right? So let me execute and we'll see what is the total open item here, 1500. Okay, it is, we have given branch office number, but uh, the account in the sense amount got posted even against head office also. And even if you give the branch office number, that is 218. For Hyderabad location, we have posted this for Hyderabad branch. So 218 and then execute. So even for this branch also, system will show that 1500 open item is there. Now here it's a kind of information which is shown, shown by in, uh, system that account this one is a branch office okay uh, line items are managed at head office at this level okay 
because the payment will be made by these people only. If still, if you want to look at the branch office, the balances at branch office level, just press enter. So at branch office level also, same amount is there. Okay. Now, click on back button. And then, I will just do one thing. Once again, I'm going to make a posting of 1000 rupees for branch office. This is 10219. Keep in your mind, the head office is 217. And 218 and 219 is branch office customer. And here, once again, I'm going to give 1609-2018. So that this item also is going to be due. Okay. Now, give amount 1000 rupees. And again, here, GL account. So 3000. 3000 is your GL account sales revenue. Okay, once you press enter, then once again, what is happening? Branch, branch office is going to appear here in customer master field and sorry, head office will appear here in customer master field, customer number field and your branch will appear underneath, beneath of that downside. So now here, Again, simulate. So if you are simulating, once again, the invoices are going to be posted here in system against head office itself. Save it. It, it means to post it. Now, so now here, just come to FBL5 and, and here make it 219. So if you want to look at look look at a branch office level, if you want to look at branch office level, then what will happen? Click on execute and press enter. So at branch office level, 1000. And even this is for Bangalore. If you want to see the uh, Hyderabad for Hyderabad, it is 2018. So you have to look like 2018. You have to see like this. Click on continue. So this is at Hyderabad location. For head office level, how much total guys? Give the head office customer number and then execute. So at head office level, how many? How much? It is total 2,500 rupees. Still we have to receive from XYZ limited head office. Okay. Now this is overdue. So it means we have, let's suppose we have not received. Let's suppose we have not received this uh, amount. So what will happen Then we are going to send a notice. Okay. So where to send these notices guys? The notices will be sent to the head office because they are the, uh, uh, you know, ultimately these people are going to make payment. So we'll have to generate a notice letter against head office. Before that, I will just do one thing in head of this customer master. I have not assigned dunning procedure. So use XD02. And this is the head office customer number. So I'll have to assign the net dunning procedure here. And save it. Okay. So what I have done. We have done with the all relevant customer master creations and I have posted the invoices and I've shown you guys even invoices are getting posted against branch office, but it is also the balance is getting updated even in head of, against head office also. So if you want to see the consolidated balance, you have to see at head office level that how much total we have to receive from this XYZ limited. If you want to look at the branch office level from their Hyderabad branch, how much we are receiving how much we have to receive from Bangalore uh, branch, how much we have to receive. So individually we are going to look at the branch office level, the balances can be seen. Now, so let's suppose we have not received payment. We have not received payment. 
from uh, this customers and all. So what will happen? It's time to send a reminder notice to the customer. OK, so the customer means all. All in the sense like customer, it doesn't mean that, uh, you know, this one. What to say branch offices customer means we are going to send it to the head office itself because we know that head office itself is involved in the payment. So now here. We'll run a dunning. We'll run a dunning program F110. Press enter. And what is the date today? 22nd. So give 22nd 09 2018. Identification code will give something TM10A. And then click on parameter. So here, company code, give your company code. Okay, guys, actually, uh, sorry, actually, F150, I was thinking a different scenario here. So I made a mistake. It's not this one, F150. Sorry, F150, that is for Danny. For Danny, F150 not F110. OK, so now what is happening, guys? We have not received the uh, amount, so we are going to send a reminder to the head office. So now head office level, if you're going to send the reminder, then what will happen? Whichever, whichever the invoices, whichever the invoices are due for all the branches that is going to be listed out here now. So I'll just give 20 second, 20 second. Uh, 09 2018. Okay. Here, give TM 10A itself and click on parameter and we'll enter the parameter here. So, give this dunning date, this one, same date, company code TM 10. And the customer, we are going to give this head office customer number itself. What is that? This one. OK, so if you give head office means whichever branch offices are there, system is going to search in all branch offices and it will run. It will select all the invoices which is due or overdue at whichever branches are there. If they're having 100 branches for all against all 100 branches, system is going to search all the overdue item and system will generate a reminder. So 100, 217, save it. So we have to run this APP here and head office level itself. Now click on schedule. Simple dunning run we are going to make guys. So already I have covered this dunning. So I don't think that I need to explain once again what is this dunning all about because this is already Start. Now here, click on schedule and we'll see whether dying notices are getting generated or not. Press enter, enter, press and running, press enter. You have to keep on pressing enter until this status is going to be changed. Keep on pressing enter. Look at your dying selection is complete. It means that is completed. OK, now what will happen, guys? So we'll uh, see here because I will just check sample printout itself whether the system has selected both the line items or one line item or none of the line item. So click on sample printout. Press this one and display only. OK, display only so that we can see whether the system has considered both line items, one line items, or none of the line items for reminder. Okay. So click on display and it's taking some time. 
Okay. So now look at here. The first Dunning notices, and in that, look at here, guys. Both both line item got selected. Okay, both line item in the sense like both both documents got selected. Okay, here the document number, posting date, everything, and by uh, it, it become overdue by a margin of how many days. This is also getting uh, this is also appearing here. So to the head office, what is happening, guys? We are going to send. A reminder for all the consolidated balances. Why? Because against head office, they are having ten. Uh, you know, what is a branch offices and all. So if we have sold goods to the branch offices, and if we have not received payment on time, then we are going to escalate to the head office. So escalation means we are going to send a reminder. Reminder means for all the branches, what is the whatever the uh, what to say outstanding amount is there against all the branches that is going to be selected. It means it's working fine. Our head office, branch office concept is working fine. But guys, now these things till here it's okay. But again, the twist will come after some time. Okay, if I did this, and then after some time again, somebody raised a query that so the customer is saying that don't send direct notices to the head office itself. Send the notices also to the branch office itself. We will have internal communication, and then the final payment is going to be received or released by head office. This is you need to understand, guys. Now this is going to be most unique things. Okay. What is the requirement? The requirement is, let's suppose here we have done like head office, branch office, in, in the sense like three customers we have created. First one as a head office, and second one and third one as a branch office. Okay, whenever invoices are getting posted, invoices are getting posted against branch offices, but it is getting updated at head office level also. Okay, now whenever we have to raise a dunning notices, then dunning notices in the sense reminder letter is going to be sent to the head office. Why? Because we know that this person is responsible to make payment. Okay, so that is why we have to run this dunning notices. And dunning reminder at head office level itself. Always in head office and branch office level, always we have to run this dunning uh, reminder letter. We have to send to the head office, and we have to run this dunning program at head office level itself, guys. Keep in your mind. Okay. Now the requirement is: this head office people are saying that don't send reminder at head office. Send the reminder also to the branch office itself. We will be having internal communication based on that. We are going to release the payment. Okay. So now here the requirement is whenever you run this, you know, whenever you send, uh, whenever you run this dunning, the dunning letter should be generated for the branch office itself at this for this customer and this customer. Okay. Dunning letter supposed not to be generated for head office and it should not send to the head office. Okay. So here the question is: the reminder letter must be generated at branch office, branch office, uh, you know, what to say, level itself. Okay. Once we generate this dunning letter, what is happening, guys? So this is going to be sent. This is going to be sent where? This is going to be sent to the head office. Why? Because here head office. Look at here head office. Customer name is there, and even address also will appear. That will be changed by the technical consultant, so the head office uh, address will appear. So this is going to be clear to the head office. Now head office is saying that don't send reminder at uh, you know head office. You send the reminder to the branch office itself, and then we are going to uh, have a look internally, and then final payment will be released. So now here instead of head office, what is happening, guys? The dunning letters will be generated at branch office level letter. Uh, sorry, branch office level. In the sense, instead of this name, the branch office, like branch office Hyderabad and branch office, uh, you know, Bangalore, name supposed to be there, and their address is supposed to be there, so that once we courier, it is going to reach at branch offices. They will internally communicate, and then final payment is going to be released from head office. Now, if this is the case, then what will happen at branch office level? If you are going to send the dunning notices, then here there is two line item, two line item in the sense, guys. One is belongs to. Look at here. This one belongs to. I'll just click on back button. So the first line item belongs to, uh, you know, what to say, a different branch, and second line item belongs to a different branch. So if the dunning reminder need to be sent at branch level, 
then in this case what will happen here in this case there is an involvement of two branches in this letter the amount belongs to two different different branches it means two separate dunning letter need to be generated okay two separate dunning letter need to be generated now so uh, how it is going to happen okay how it is going to happen that i will let you know this is pretty unique guys there is one more these all things are not the part of course contents guys this is not the part of curriculum and nowhere you will be finding okay so anyway after this uh, we will next session onwards we have to start this fisd integration so that because still we are having some more topic to cover and the timing is very less only seven eight days are there so okay we'll do one thing guys then uh, what i said the dining letter whichever was generated that was generated at head office level okay this is i'll just show you this was the dining letter which got generated at head office level click on display only don't click on print if you click on print then it is going to disappear now so head office level means all the due items are going to be accumulated by system and all together it's going to show that this much is the outstanding now the requirement is the dunning notice must be generated at branch office level so there should be two dunning letter one is for hyderabad branch and second one is for bangalore branch in that case what will happen so click on back button click on back so at branch level if you have to generate then just delete delete this current one and then we have to do small amendment where is small amendment let me open a new screen and open the head of his customer master xd02 open the head of his customer master that is head of his customer master means this is the number it is 217 tm10 press enter and in, in head of his customer master click on company core data and uh, click on correspondence click on correspondence and guys there we have to apply a check mark where here decentralized processing save this what is the use of this decentralized processing guys this is also pretty unique you search wherever you want to be finding now this except few blogs which was written long back so this decentralized processing means what if you apply a check mark a decentralized for this decentralized processing it means we have given instruction to the system now dunning letters are going to be generated at branch level itself okay see centralized means what centralized means let's suppose all you know whatever the several states are there but center is a you know like main power okay so and decentralized means like let's suppose if you talk about defense mechanisms or uh, all this different related defense related budgets and uh, policies and everything is made by central government so it means whatever the de defense related orders are there or whatever defense related uh, what to say decisions are there that is centralized here it means central government is going to take this decision but if you it is going to be decentralized it means these all decisions will be taken at taken at state level likewise here we have decentralized decentralized means now whichever the dunning letters are getting generated at uh, head office level now that is going to be generated at branch level how look at here already we are having this dunning procedure and the previous parameter i have deleted now click on schedule 
and click on continue and click on schedule simple running run we are going to do so now let's see what is happening guys keep on pressing enter so it is completed sample printout lp01 click on continue and display only okay look at here guys now what is happening now the dunning letter got generated for branch office hyderabad branch office hyderabad for 1500 okay and if you press the click on back button then second dunning uh, letter is also going to be appear and that is at bangalore in the sense like look at here the bangalore office this is our Bangalore office. Here, look at here. This amount is 1000. So, now what is happening? If there is a requirement that the Dunning notices will be generated at for this branch office level itself, then we have to apply a check mark where we have to apply a check mark on decentralized processing. If you apply a check mark on decentralized processing, then Dunning letters and Dunning notices will be generated at branch level. If you don't apply a check mark, then all the dunning notices are going to be sent to the uh, head office itself and finally payment is going to be released by uh, head office and guys kindly do not ask like why what about the payment if the payment is going to be made by branch offices guys if the payment is going to be made by branch offices then this concept itself is going to be finished then branch office all the branch offices that there won't be head office concept then whatever the branch offices are there everything is going to be created as a separate separate customers and all so this is a normal procedure itself okay this head office branch office concept comes into picture only if the invoices are going to be sent at branch office labels and the final payment we are going to receive from head office okay so this is how this concept or is like if branch offices itself is going to do each and every activities and all then separate entities we are going to create a separate separate customers and there won't be this head office branch office concept itself is not there okay so uh this is all about this head office and branch of it office concept guys head office branch office concept comes into picture only if there is a main there is an organization which has given authorizations to their branches to make uh, purchase and sales independently in that case what is happening the invoices are going to be received by the branches only the invoices are going to be processed at branch level. They are going to receive the invoices, but the final payment is going to be made by head office. Okay. So in that case, what is happening, guys? I will, I forgotten one more thing to tell you guys. Let's suppose. So here, Dunning, Dunning reminder, Dunning notices, we are able to generate. Dunning notices, we are able to generate at branch level. Look at here branch level and finally if you have to make payment let's suppose if you have to you receive payment okay you receive payment from head office so use f-28 press enter and you see how it is going to happen so make your document date 22 09 2018 and give you a bank account let's suppose we have received all the payment 2500 and the customer is 100 217 head office itself process open item so what will happen once we uh, post the payment against head office then whatever the open items are there at branch offices label that is also going to be cleared automatically how it is going to happen guys i'll just show you here okay it's taking time okay so now okay look at here both the amounts are appearing 1500 and 1000 so simply just a normal payment itself we are going to make click on simulate Click on simulate and then save it. So the payment is going to be posted. Just wait, it's taking time. 
mind me server is low. So now here, <coughs> click on post. And then we'll do one thing. Use FBL5N. FBL5N, the moment this payment is going to be posted, we'll do one thing. Click on all items. And let, let, let me check. Okay, the payment got posted here. Okay. So now if you look, if you have a look here at branch office, sorry, head office, click on look at here the payment got posted it means it got cleared okay if you look at the branch office level also so here at head office level what is happening guys head office level means both the item is going to be shown here but branch office level if you are if you're if you're going to see at branch office level then click on execute and press enter so branch office level only one only one line item got clear because remaining the 1000 is not belongs to this branch that remaining 1000 is belongs to Bangalore branch and for that the customer number is 1000 sorry 219 219 so look at here this thousand this is also got cleared okay and if you look at the clearing document number this is uh, same document number will be there okay so now this is all about the head office and branch office concept guys and this will come into picture only if this is the case and it's not happening for all the customers very rare customers will be there who is having these kind of concepts so if anybody any customers are going to explain these kind of scenarios then what will happen and users will be having confusions and all and they will start asking like how, how come it possible how do, how to make uh, you know pay transaction posting in SAP, how the payments are going to be cleared, how the running notices will be generated. So instead of the customers, they don't, they don't know. They are just going to give the scenarios and all that we are having so and so things that invoice is you guys has to send invoices to our branch offices, but the payment is going to be made by our head office. Isn't it? So simply they are coming back to the consultant and they will say that this is the scenario. So what we have to give the solution guys, you have to say that Okay, you just ask them what whatever their branch offices are there. If they're having five, five branch offices, all five branch offices are going to be created as a separate customers, separate, separate five customers we are going to create. And head office is also going to be created uh, as one independent customer. So whichever head office number, customer number is there, that is going to be linked against branch offices. Now, whenever we post any invoice against branch offices, the same amount is going to be updated at head office level also and once we receive from head office then the payment is going to be posted against head office itself so head office amount is also going to be cleared at the same time all the branch offices amounts are also going to be cleared simultaneously so this is how it is going to work out if we have to send dunning notices we are going to run dunning program at head office level so it is going to dunning reminder later is going to be generated and it will be sent to the head office level if head office says that no dunning letter i don't want to uh, ex i don't want to receive dunning letter from you guys you just send it at branch office branch office letter itself branch office level itself in that case we have to in in head office master data we have to apply a check mark on decentralized processing if you apply a check mark then dunning letters are going to be generated at branch office level itself so this is all about this head office and branch office concept guys watch this video twice and thrice you guys will be able to understand this concept you won't be finding anywhere else okay so that's all in this session guys that's all for today